Hello YouTube, this is just a follow up video on my Regal Box tutorial. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the more advanced settings uh, for beginners. Um, so let's take a look. If you haven't yet seen the first video, I'll pop a link in the description and on screen now. Uh, otherwise, continue watching. In the first video there, I showed you how to access the Regal Box file share so you can add your ROMs. Um, there is another way that you can access your Recall box and that's through the built-in web GUI. Um, so to, to connect into that, what you'll need to do is open up your web browser and type in forward slash forward slash Recall box and then forward slash. If you are connected on the network, you should then see the following screen. From here, you can do a number of things uh, from monitor your system resources, uh, read and edit the configuration file for Eaglebox. Uh, you can even add your ROMs uh, through the web browser here um, and manage your BIOS files. Um, there is also support for a virtual gamepad, uh, which I believe allows you to use your uh, mobile phone uh, as a gamepad for the system. Uh, so looking closely here, you can go into uh, monitor your system resources. Um, that'll give you some information on your CPU uh, and your current memory status. Um, it also tells you the temperature of your um, Raspberry Pi. Adding ROMs is pretty much the same as you would um, on a Windows file share. So if you go into it, you can see all your uh, emulators. Um, and basically what you need to do is click on your emulator that you want to add your files for and then basically you just click and drag uh, your, your ROMs into the drop files here to upload section. You don't need to access Regalbox through the web browser. Um, it does give you a bit of an overview on the features of Regalbox uh, and gives you a bit of a, a user-friendly GUI um, to, to achieve the same tasks that you can um, through the Windows share. When system updates become available for your recall box, um, you will be prompted uh, like so. However, you can do this manually, um, or you can check manually by going into the main menu here, um, and then scrolling down to system settings, and then down to updates, and then start update. I'm not going to do it for this video, um, but that's basically where you will update your recall box. Most of these advanced settings are pretty much user preference um, and you don't need to modify them if you do not wish. Um, the one, the main one that you will have to modify um, only if you uh, are using recall box on a Raspberry Pi 1 or a Raspberry Pi 0 is the overclocking. Um, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 1 here, um, so in the main menu here, if you press start, go down to settings, um, and then scroll down to overclock, uh, you can see here I've got it uh, set to turbo, you can go through and overclock this to extreme, high, none, or turbo, by default it will be set to none. Um, I find setting mine to turbo works quite well. Um, the Recalbox website, I believe, does tell you to overclock the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi 0 to extreme. Once you've set that, it will want to reboot. Um, so basically, you hit reboot. It'll set those overclock settings. Now, one thing to note is that it will void the warranty of your Raspberry Pi. Though, if you are doing this with a Raspberry Pi 1, most likely out of warranty by now, um, but double check that. If you are overclocking your Raspberry Pi, uh, make sure that you have plenty of cooling because um, it will get quite hot. Um, at least at least have some uh, copper heat sink sitting on the, uh, the chips on the Raspberry Pi and you should be all good. Another thing I like to set personally is the ratio. Um, so you can basically set the ratio for all systems by default. Uh, or you can set the ratio for individual systems. So to do that, you go to the start menu or main menu, um, scroll down to game settings, um, and then you've got game ratio there at the top, currently set to auto. So I normally set mine to uh, 16 slash um, nine. As I said, you can, you can change it for individual systems. 
you scroll down to advanced uh, Super Nintendo for example um, you can change the game ratio down at the bottom here though setting it back in the main menu um, back here you won't need to set it individually for systems unless you have a preference for specific systems um, another thing under the advanced game settings there uh, for individual systems is you can set which emulator you are using um, by default they're usually quite, uh, set uh, quite appropriately um, but if you have a, a preference as to what emulator you, you like to use uh, you can basically go in here and, and scroll through um, and view what emulators are installed For the Super Nintendo, uh, Nintendo uh, and Sega Mega Drive, um, those types of systems, um, I normally use the default myself. Um, I found that uh, the only time you normally have to play with uh, the emulator settings is if you're using Neo Geo games um, or Final Burn Alpha emulator. Back under the game settings menu, um, there is one other thing that I normally do change. Uh, which is personal preference um, and that's the shaders set I normally set mine to retro um, it just gives that little bit of a retro feel to uh, the older games um, again it is personal preference uh, some people do not like having scan lines uh, but I, I do like having a bit of scan lines there in my retro games I did find having the shaders set uh, set to retro did affect some of the games um, in the main emulator um, for example the Super Nintendo games look perfectly fine um, all the right scan lines um, or just the right amount of scan lines I should say um, but then going into a game in MAME uh, Snow Bros was the one that I did find the issue with um, basically the the scan lines were just ridiculously uh, large and over the top so you may want to just uh, leave that at uh, none um, or if you do have it set uh, basically just find which games it works best with and then just disable it when you want to play the games that it doesn't work well with. Now another cool feature that you can do with Recall Box is you can get the box art for your games. Um, so you can see here I have Donkey Kong Country. Uh, so if I want to grab the box up for Donkey Kong Country, what I'll need to do is hit the start button to bring up the main menu. Scroll down to Scraper. You leave the defaults here and hit Scrape Now. Uh, and then it'll ask you if you want to filter um, your search. So you can do all games or only missing games. Um, or all systems or you can go in here and remove the systems you don't want to scrape um, just for this video I'm going to do the Super Nintendo uh, so we can get the box art for Donkey Kong Country uh, then go down and hit start now you will want to make sure that your naming conventions are as close as possible to the, uh, the original game name um, now you can see here that it hasn't found uh, Donkey Kong Country. Um, now the reason being is if you go down to input here, you can see here it's trying to search for the, the last remaining characters um, of my file name. Uh, so what you will need to do is just type it in manually. And then hit search. Now you can see it's found uh, Donkey Kong games. Basically, you just scroll down to you f until you find uh, the game you're looking for and select that one. Once you've finished uh, getting all the box art for your games, um, you will get the screen here. Hit OK, and then you can see that you've got uh, the box art for your games, uh, and it also gives you a bit of a description about the game, when you last played it, and how many times you've played it. Um, now you don't need to do that for all systems, um, you can see here that uh, the Nintendo one um, basically all set out like files, 
Um, so you, you basically you do that for all, all your favourites, um, or you can do it for all your games. Um, it, depending on how many games you have listed um, in your folders, it, it may take quite some time to, to grab all the box arts for them. Um, and especially if you don't have the correct naming of your files, uh, you will have to manually put them in. Lastly, the thing I'm going to cover in this video is uh, themes. You can change the themes that Recalbox uses. Um, to do that, basically, you uh, go to your Recalbox share, um, and then you can see this system folder here. Now, it is a, a hidden folder, so you will have to enable hidden items. And then the folder you need to click on is this dot emulation station folder. Now in here you've got a themes folder. If you click on the themes folder there, you can basically copy all your new themes across to this folder. And once they finish copying across, you can then view them on Regalbox and change them from there. I'll pop a link in the description as to where you can get the extra themes from. Um, by default, uh, Recalbox does not come with uh, the option to change themes. Uh, hopefully in the future it will, um, but uh, during the time of this video, um, it's not currently possible to change themes um, without manually copying the theme files and folders into Recalbox. Once you've copied over the theme files to change your theme, what you need to do is go into the main menu, scroll down to UI settings, and then scroll down to theme set uh, and then you can select your theme you will have to reboot uh, the system after uh, you change your theme uh, some some themes once you change it um, it doesn't load all the icons and all the images uh, so rebooting it uh, helps it to do that um, the theme that I personally liked was Simple Light, which was on an earlier version of Recalbox. Uh, so just for this demonstration, I'm going to set it to that. Once it's rebooted, uh, you will then see your new theme that you've set. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, if this video helped you out, um, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button uh, and subscribe to my channel if you like to see more content. Thanks for watching.